Okay, I'm gonna now show the uh, the new version of the Smart Plug app on the tablet, um, similar to the last video where I showed the app for the Smart Muffs. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you can go ahead and plug in the cable, and you want to click on the Sensor Utility app version two. And just like the Smart Muff, you want to make sure the Smart Plug is off. So there's no LEDs on or blinking, and you know that it's off. It does need to be charged. Um, as soon as I plugged it in, you see that it, it recognized it, and it's going to go right to the, uh, the device, the headset screen. Now, an important thing to remember is that the Smart Plug does come in two versions. Um, a basic version with only sends and two-way radio capability, and a full version with short-range FM radio and Bluetooth capability. Um, so this application will not allow a basic model to be upgraded to a full version. Okay, that's that's a hardware configuration. Uh, but this first device tab displays the device information, the product type, the MFP number. It also shows the currently programmed software versions. Um, and so here is where different firmware versions can be programmed uh, from this tab. So I'll talk briefly about the different firmware versions that you can see. Um, bootloader, that's, a, that's firmware that runs the programming mode. This is currently 1.0 and it's not currently changeable via the app. The main application, this is the main runtime firmware. This is what the user will experience. It's uh, responsible for all the underlying operations like buttons, audio, etc. The audio image contains all of the audio sounds or sound effects. That's this main application calls this data when it needs to play things like tones, beeps, or other sounds. And then lastly, the configuration profile allows you to configure and customize programmable features. For instance, features that can be turned on or off. Um, so you'll see that on mine, it's up to date. So all the text is green. That means everything is up to date. Um, green with an arrow would be showing you firmware on the device is undefined and you need to program update with the latest one on the list. If it's in red, that means your firmware is out of date. So you need to download an update to the app first with Wi-Fi connected on your tablet. And if it's red with an arrow, it means it wants you to, to uh, select which ones for download. Now it's important to remember that the firmware will not be applied unless the update headset is selected. So if I change any of these, if any of these were out of date or if I wanted to change the configuration profile, then anything I change won't be updated unless I click update headset. Okay. It also shows you at the top the MFP number, which is the also gives the serial number, uh, the PCA number, the product type. Here is where it would say full or basic. Mine on this one says unprogrammed because it's a, a demo, uh, one of the first prototypes from uh, that were given to sales and uh, myself. And also the last data was programmed. So right here in the beginning is a key thing. It's going to tell you if it's full or, or basic under product type. Okay, if we move to the settings tab at the top, this next tab has all the configurable features and it displays them displays them all for con configuration, customization. Um, now, depending on which smart plug you have, either a basic or a full, some settings will not display. So for instance, this is a full version, as I said before, so you see everything. You see audio, speaker limit, Bluetooth, FM radio, short range, and button assignment. Now, if this was just a basic model, all you would see is audio, speaker limit, and button assignment, okay? So let's go into each one and I'll show you how we can configure those. So audio is the first one. The speaker volume. Here you can set the current overall speaker volume level at startup. Um, the slider bar corresponds to the volume level that you see on the bottom down here. Um, and each step corresponds to a volume button step on the unit itself. So it can go all the way up to to five, and that's the same thing when you actually have the device itself. 
you can go volume up five or volume down five and it'll tell you each one and that's pretty straightforward next is the speaker limiter the speaker limiter lets you set the overall speaker uh, limit in the ear and the default is 82 db um, but the range is configurable from 70 db up to 90 db and so you do that by just tapping it and it enters a scroll menu that you can just uh, scroll up or down. But we're going to leave it set at the default. Okay. Um, this is always enabled. Um, that you, you're not able to actually deselect that. So, and that's 82 dB is the default. Is the same as with all Sincere products. All right. Next is Bluetooth. Um, the Bluetooth option allows you to enable or disable Bluetooth, um, enable or disable the radio push to talk mode, and also set the, um, the receive and transmit volumes for Bluetooth. So let's talk about the enable checkbox first. Um, this enables or disables the overall Bluetooth feature. So if you disable it, and now you disconnect your smart plug in to use it, even though it's a full, full version, you won't have Bluetooth capability in there. So disabling this takes the, it's like a lockout. If you disable it, the feature goes away. So you probably want to have that enabled if, if you have a full version that you're getting ready to send to a customer. Um, the enable or disable radio PTT mode. Um, this should always be disabled unless you have a a radio device with a compatible push-to-talk protocol and right now that's only the Kenwood NX5300 um, otherwise without that compatibility of the device itself um, checking it will create a will create an echo uh, in the speaker um, so you don't want to have this enabled unless you have that specific um, radio which right now is the Kenwood NX5300 or later on we'll, we're going to be qualifying hopefully more radios that have push to talk capability on the headset itself okay and I'll talk a little bit more about that in the training of the smart plug the tr uh, receive and transmit volumes this is only for um, Bluetooth calls only this is not for the um, audio streaming and the 6 dB of the RX, uh, the receive volume, and the 12 dB of transmit volume are can, are pretty much optimized for what's a good general setting. But they are there. They shouldn't need to be adjusted. But in some cases, like for instance, if the receive volume was low, um, you could increase it here. Okay. And that's it for Bluetooth. Next is a uh, FM radio. Um, remember, this is FM radio listening. This is not the short-range FM capability, so uh, keep that in mind. Um, the FM radio options allow you to enable or um, disable the FM radio, and also to have FM the FM radio um, on at power up. And pretty much as simple as that. Again, just like with the Bluetooth, if you disable the checkbox of the the enable here you will you will lock out the feature of FM radio listening so you want to always have it enabled um, probably um, Arnet startup is just like what it sounds if you check that and when when it when it comes on the FM radio will automatically turn on at power up um, and th this option is ignored if the FM radio is not enabled um, On it startup also remembers the 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 on state of the FM radio when it's shut down, so it'll it'll remember that. Another note is that if FM radio on its startup um, will be over overridden if the short wave on its startup is enabled, and I'm going to talk more about that um, in the next the next tab here. Uh, but that's the FM radio tab. And if you want to change the FM radio listening frequency, again, you just tap on it 
and you can set it anywhere from 88.0 to 107.9 megahertz with the scroll wheel. Okay, that brings us to the short range tab. Short range, um, this allows you to enable or disable the function itself, just as with the previous tabs. So if you disable this checkbox, you've just um, locked out that feature. On at startup is just like it for FM radio. Now here, the number of channels and the current channel, if we tap on it, you can set up to eight different presets uh, for short range, and then you can um, you can set each channel's frequency for short range. So it allows you to have eight presets, just like in a almost like in a car radio, to have uh, eight different frequencies across the band that can be set for different short range communication frequencies. So for each channel, like if I want to change channel one, make sure that's the current channel is one and then I change the frequency. Okay. And right now it's only giving me the option to do one because I just have the one enabled. Let's say I want to have three channels. I would set each channel, so this is current channel one, and you can set channel one. And then change current channel to two, then you can set channel two, and so forth. And the region you you should always have is region one. That's the strong. That'll give you the strongest um, short range transmit um, level. And um, that's that's basically it for short range. The last one is button assignment. Button assignment um, is just what it sounds like. Um, there are two the two buttons on the smart plug with the. The top one is inline button one, and the bottom one is inline button two. And top is if, is if you're looking at it like this. Okay. So tapping on what it says for, you see, inline button one and inline two button, you can set it to make it two-way, short range, or Bluetooth. And you can, you can do that for each, both button, and also the multi-function button which looks just like it does on the smart muffs. Now the only thing you want to be careful when you're assigning the buttons is you don't want to set the um, the two-way push-to-talk or short-range push-to-talk on the MFB button for a Bluetooth enabled smart plug because for a Bluetooth enabled smart plug on the full version the MFB button is the handset um, pairing mode button. Okay. Um, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you can set it to um, however you want the buttons to be configured. And this is a setting where you do need to save, um, you need to hit apply changes here at the bottom to save your changes if you do change any of the button assignments. Um, that's the last um, setting. I'm gonna go back to the first screen and just by in closing, I'm just gonna talk about some things to remember. You need to have Wi-Fi connected for the app to check the cloud, and, and that's important to make sure that the update's available to, to recognize that there's an update available. You need to be Wi-Fi connected. Um, number two is the tablet downloads the firmware from the cloud to be stored locally on the tablet. So again, it kind of goes back to you need to have make sure you do have a Wi-Fi connection. Okay, And the app uses that locally stored data. Uh, so that again points to the Wi-Fi connection. So all this local data is what's used by the tablet. And to get the, the updated local data, you need to have the Wi-Fi connection. Okay. I hope that was a quick explanation of the, the Sensor Utility app V2, version two. Um, thank you.